Center. Um, I hope that you are all comfortable. I snuck one of the cinnamon rolls. Uh, I highly recommend them. Um, but the only thing I ask is that please don't wander around, you know, in the middle of prayer and preferably not in the middle of the sermon either. Um, please stand as you are able and join in our call to worship. Despite hardship, our ancestors dared to dream God-sized dreams. Praise God for hope-filled dreams. Do it again, Lord. Dream big dreams through us today. Praise God for new dreams for our generation. Invisible God, be visible through our faith today. Praise God who empowers us with faith to see what others miss. Will we stop building a better future because of evil? No, our God will deliver us from evil. Come now, Lord, and fulfill your dreams in us today. Our opening hymn is found in the faith we sing, the little black hymnal 2208. Guide my feet and we'll sing stanzas one, four, and five. God, open us today to your life-giving grace and transformative love. Empower us to greet the wheat and the weeds in our own hearts with care and compassion. Inspire us to meet the weeds and the wheat in our neighbors with acceptance and hope. Make us instruments of hospitality and grace so that we may tend and love our neighbors 
even as we are attended and loved by you. Amen. You may be seated. Continuing in prayer, harvesting God, as we listen to your word by your Holy Spirit, lead our hearts in the way everlasting. Amen. Amen. Scripture this morning is taken from Psalm 139. Verses 1 through 12 and 23 through 24. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offense in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. The word of God for us, the people of God. Uh, I'm going to need some chairs. Can I invite the children up? Josh? Nova? You want to come forward? Everybody bring a chair. Everybody bring a chair. Okay. You want to sit with her? Okay. All right. So I have a question for you. It's summertime. Have either of you been stung or bitten by a mosquito? A mosquito? Only a mosquito? Yeah. I'm glad it wasn't a bee. Uh, yeah, but it, yeah, but it didn't. It didn't get you. No. Okay. That's okay. Did you get a mosquito bite? Have you had any mosquito bites? Did they itch? It was a, a, annoying, wasn't it? It's, it's just it's frustrating and aggravating, isn't it? I have had the worst summer with mosquitoes that I have ever had because I have a puppy who needs to go out first thing in the morning when the air is damp and the mosquitoes are in clouds. When it was 89 degrees or 85 degrees in the morning, I was going out in a sweatshirt and winter socks and boots and long pants 
because I, I got bit all the way up to my knees when I wore, you know, anything less than that or when I had on pants that were blousey. And that's not enough. I got stung by a wasp and the venom has, uh, it, it's annoying. <laughs> and you scratch and you scratch and you scratch, right? We call mosquitoes and things like that pests. They're pests. They annoy us. Okay, okay. But we have to remember that even mosquitoes and even wasps have been created by God. You were created by God and you were created by God, just like the rest of us here. And unfortunately, so were the wasps and the mosquitoes. And we don't always understand why God has made what God has made, but we know that God makes everything on purpose, with a purpose and by design. So you were made to be you, and you, Nova, were made to be you, and nobody else has ever been like either one of you before. So know that God made you to be you exactly the way you are, and God loves you just the way you are. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the love that led you to give us Nova. And um, I want to say Joshua. James. And Joshua. So, Lord... You know them, you know their heart, and we pray that your love will live in their heart and shine in their hearts always as they live in the world that you made for them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats now. Our scripture today is found in Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30, and 36 through 43. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered. Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, 
and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will then throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, please. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Breathe upon us. Rest upon us that we may hear with joy the word you have for us this day. Amen. So first, I want to provide a little insight into the lectionary group that I meet with on Tuesdays. Um, you know, the sermon title is Weeds Happen. Now, I'm not going to name any names, but let me just tell you that one of my colleagues suggested that I needed to change the title of the sermon and put out on the marquee, weed happens. <laughs> Suggested that maybe we might get a few people who were curious about what was going on in here. But no, weeds happen. And they are frustrating and aggravating. Weeds could drive a good person to cursing because they just keep showing up with, pardon my French, damnable regularity, even in the most carefully tilled and tended gardens. I mean, isn't that one of the questions that we would put to God? Why is it that weeds happen? Why is it that we have to labor to prepare the soil and fertilize the soil and plant the seeds or seedlings and water them carefully, just enough, not too much? And even then, sometimes the seeds will not take root and grow. But we don't do that for weeds. They just happen. They just grow. Thank you, Bobby. Now, in his parable, Jesus said that an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, almost as though that had happened contemporaneously to some sower, planter, farmer in the first century Middle East. But Jesus also could have been talking about that first garden, Eden. Everything the sower planted was good. Everything God spoke into existence through the Word, through the Son of Man, was good. In fact, on the sixth day, God called it Ma'od Tov, very good. But then sin entered the world, and the man had to labor to grow and harvest food from the earth. And the woman had to labor to bear children. Now I could spend a lot of time trying to explain the inexplicable. How did sin come into the world? How do weeds just happen? Why does evil often go unpunished? But you and I both know that that is way beyond my pay grade. So. All I can say is that as scientists have studied all living things and the ground and everything that they have studied, what they have discovered is that in the relationships among humanity and snails and moths and apes and butterflies and birds and puppies and everything, Everything on this amazing, living, changing, growing planet, there is purpose and there is balance. And when there's an imbalance, 
nature works to fix it. Now, I told you about my unfortunate summer with the mosquitoes, and I would gladly eradicate them from the earth. However, they must serve a purpose in creation. Even if I don't know what it is, even if it seems to me that their only purpose is to make my life miserable, that's not what God intended. Mosquitoes have a purpose. And when we look around at creation, we have to ask questions like, was all of this really necessary? I mean, you look at some of the things that God has created, they seem, I don't know, superfluous, strange, um, <laughs> deliberately phantasmagorical. And yes, I looked that up to be sure I was using it correctly. I'm thinking about blowfish, the platypus, incandescent deep sea plants. I mean, why? But they have a purpose. I don't know what it is. I'm not a scientist, but I know they have a purpose. So as I thought about God's grand scheme of creation, I still had to wonder, why do we need weeds? Well, they must serve some purpose, and they grow whether we plant them or not. They just grow. So... Let me share some of the points that stuck with me from the text. First, did you notice that when the slaves saw the weeds, they blamed the sower? Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Like, it's got to be somebody's fault that the weeds showed up. So it must have been... Uh, you know, the sower was the one that worked it. Or maybe they were just trying to put the blame off of themselves. We didn't do anything to that field, so the weeds are not our fault. Don't we say things like that to God all the time? Don't we wonder if God is so good, if God is love, then why do bad things happen to good people? Why would a good, loving God even allow weeds to exist? They just frustrate the farmers and the gardeners all over the earth. Do we really need poisonous snakes? Don't we want to ask God, why do you allow things like sharks and snakes and roaches and viruses and cancer to exist. Actually, don't we ask God, why did you create such things? And I have to think immediately of Ecclesiastes. We say it, we sing it, but we might need to be reminded of it that there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Everything. But just as we have checks and balances in our government, we have checks and balances in creation. Everything has a purpose under heaven. Everything has a divinely created reason to exist. If we could accept that God put balance in nature, listen to me, so that everyone and everything would have enough to survive and thrive, then maybe, maybe we could let go of our scarcity mentality and stop hoarding things for a rainy day because we know that God will provide. We could coexist in peace. Okay, the second thing that jumped out at me was the next things that the next thing that the slaves did was ask, 
Well, so do you want us to go and pull the weeds? And what did the master say? No. No. Now, generally speaking, true confession, my hand is not the first one to pop into the air when people say, we need to do some weeding. But what if we thought about this not in terms of wheat and weeds, but as the good people and the not-so-good people? Then maybe our tendency to jump all over those not-so-good people and remove them from the premises is a little too eager. I am working on and getting better at <laughs> making myself, praying myself into shutting my own mouth and letting God be God. I mean, aren't we all guilty occasionally of wanting to weed God's garden, get the bad things out? The garden where, by the way, we think we belong, right? We belong in the garden. We're not weeds. We might think of ourselves as the lonely little petunia in an onion patch, or we might think of ourselves as a lonely little onion in a petunia patch, but we're in the patch. We're in. And it's something else that has to be removed. A gentle, compassionate garden a, a gentle, compassionate gardener. That's who God is. God who will not allow the over-eager, weed-puller wannabes to get all up against us and perhaps pull us out of the garden. Third, God's answer to the slaves is no. Weeding? is above our pay grade. That judgment, that wisdom, that discernment, that, that knows what needs to go and what needs to stay, we don't have it. Weeding is too complicated for us. If we went out weeding in God's garden, we would most likely hurt, damage, some of the baby wheat. Which brings me to um, my word nerd moment. Y'all know how fond I, I get so excited about them. So um, this is one of those examples where because we don't know the original languages and, we don't trans and they don't translate well into English, we don't quite get what the people who heard this parable got from Jesus. Because the word that is translated weeds in this parable is zazanian, and zazanian is no ordinary weed. It's the Greek name for a variety of darnel, which is a weed that looks very much like wheat. In fact, it's called false wheat. And it's hard to tell true wheat from Zazanian, especially when they're just beginning to come up out of the ground. And weeds being weeds, Zazanian is no exception. As it grows, it tangles its roots down in with the roots of the good wheat. So in fact, if you went in and started pulling that weed, you would uproot the wheat with it just as Jesus says. So God's instruction, the master instruction, is no, let the weeds and the wheat grow together. So, and the fourth point that I noticed was that the master isn't even going to let the slaves who have reported this to him do the harvesting. They're not going to pull the wheat. They're not going to pull the weeds. And we need to remember that these servants, slaves in God's farm are 
those who work for God, us, we are those servants. And God says, you are not equipped to do this job. Jesus says that the Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. Now, honestly, that last little bit made me very uncomfortable. I would have preferred it if Jesus had just stopped with all causes of sin, period, full stop. But he doesn't. He says, and all evildoers. I mean, I can get on board with a purifying fire, right? I can, I can accept that there are things within me, things within us, that do not serve us, and that God will strip those things out of us so that we are fit for heaven. I'm good with that. I mean, we'll be purified so that we will be shining like the sun in the kingdom of our Father. But I don't like Jesus saying that his angels will collect out of his kingdom all evildoers and they will be thrown into the fire. And that made me wonder if maybe there is a or hope, <laughs> wonder or hope, um, if there could be a difference between our so-called garden variety sins and actually doing evil. I'd like to think so. That's what I want to believe. But then I thought it started thinking about our sins of omission, like when we fail to speak up against racist remarks in our midst, or when we fail to stand with our LGBTQ plus friends and family members as allies. Those sins of omission act like weeds, choking the life out of those we fail to protect, choking the life out of our relationships with them. But then there's also our sins of commission, like laughing uncomfortably when a friend tells a sexist joke rather than calling them out, or continuing to vote exclusively for our own self-interest rather than voting for laws and representatives who will try to create conditions where everyone will survive and thrive. So it seems that those sins of commission choke the life out of our own best instincts, better intentions. Maybe we are more inclined to do evil. I mean, think about it this way. Wheat has to be planted year after year. It has to be tended. It has to be nurtured to bear good fruit. But weeds just happen like our sin. Our faith journey needs to be nurtured and fed, carefully tended with prayer and supported by a community. But sin just jumps on us, uninvited, unintended, unwanted. And it seems sometimes that it's going to choke the life out of our faith. With the earliest Christians, we can cry out, Abba, Father. We can be reminded that we are, in fact, children of God, beloved children of God. That's something we can't hear often enough. We can't remind ourselves often enough that every face that we look into, stranger or friend, bears the image of God, and they too have been created to be loved by God. 
Weeds happen. We all know that. Sin happens. We might not want to acknowledge that, but we know it to be true. But thanks be to God, the master gardener is tending to us, pruning away that which would destroy us, that which would lead us to sin, so that we too may shine with the love of Christ to glorify God the Father. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Our hymn of response, y'all tell me, is 563, thank you. Father, we thank you. And we're singing it to the, to the tune of 624, which you'll find is familiar. But the words are in your um, bulletin for your convenience, so we don't get confused. found at 881 in your hymnal and conveniently in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We come now to a time of sharing our joys and concerns. Sorry, there's a glare from a, a windshield that's hitting me right in the eye, so I have to move. Um, and I brought a pencil today, but apparently I need to ask Jeff for a pen. Jeff, may I have a pen? <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> okay, so one of the joys is a delightful pen. Okay. All right. Um, what, what are the joys and concerns? You have the microphone ready? Okay. Dan. I have one concern. My childhood friend, Dan, 
who suffered a massive stroke three weeks ago, is still in the rehab hospital in Winston-Salem. We spoke with him last night. Uh, he's lost use of his right arm and right leg, and he's battling his way back. He has a long, long road to go to recovery, and he covets your prayers uh, in that process. Um, I want to thank the Lord that I'm here today. <laughs> I had, a little scare, had a little scare last night, spent some time in the ER, and I'm, I'm back. So uh, another great joy is we um, will celebrate our son Jacob's promotion to full board colonel August the 1st in Whoa. Fort Meade. So uh, we got that invitation this week. Awesome. Yes. And an amen from Bailey. I have a concern for Frank, uh, who was moved to hospice this week mm -hmm. from the hospital. I'd like to thank the women that took charge yesterday at the <laughs> mission study. I appreciate it. I attended a Lions district meeting and was awarded a Melvin Jones Fellow. It is a wonderful plaque. They, they had to pay $1,000 to be able to offer that. So, of course, I had to cry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, thank you, ladies. Okay, what was the name of the of the... Wow, congratulations. Barbara Long, who was recuperating at home the last I heard. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he really wants everybody to know, but prayers for Earl Kirby. Um, he's at home with infected feet. Um, uh, and so uh, Connie took him to the emergency room yesterday um, to get antibiotics for his feet. Mm. Um, we. I, I mentioned this to the Sunday school class this morning. Um, yesterday when I got home from Mission U, there was a line of police cars and an emergency vehicle in front of one of my neighbor's homes. And it's a family I don't know well. And all we know is that someone, a young man, oh well, a man, um, died of a drug overdose there yesterday. And the police were there for a good long time into the evening. So um, praying for that family, Jay and his family. Um, are there others? Let us go to God in prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks that you are, in fact, a loving God, that you are the master gardener, that you are the loving creator father, that you are the birther of all that is, and that you know us intimately and care for us more deeply and intimately than we can even imagine. With that assurance, may we give our loved ones, our concerns, our fears into your hands, trusting that you know more about what needs to be done, what is best, and how it will all turn out than we can imagine knowing that we can trust you with these precious gifts of our loved ones, of our own lives, 
We can trust you because you love us. Lord, lead us to understand that you have a purpose even for the weeds and mosquitoes, for the things that torment us or are just pests, for the people who torment us or are just pests. Help us to look upon your creation, recognizing your amazing hand at work, putting everything into balance, giving everything a purpose, even if we don't quite understand it, so that our world keeps turning, the rain keeps falling, the sun keeps shining, and we have air to breathe. Help us to acknowledge the ways that we have mistreated your creation and one another. Guide us into the work that we need to do, the self-examination, the questions we need to be asking so that we may be drawn closer to your heart, so that we may walk in your love and shine with it, share it with all whom we encounter, all whom we encounter. Grant us grace to look upon our own failings, and see ourselves through your eyes of love, and then offer that same grace to others. And Lord, to the extent that we are able, empower us to spread this good news, this love, this acceptance, this understanding that everything has a purpose and a meaning in your world so that all people are brought to understand that we must protect one another. We must protect your creation. That nothing we can have or do or say in the moment is more important than the big picture which is the flourishing of your kingdom come upon the earth so that all people everywhere may love as you love and do your will. We pray all these things in the powerful name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave us a prayer to say, and we say it together now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, let us continue with our confession. Trusting in God's mercy, let us acknowledge to ourselves and each other those ways that we fall short of what God intends for us, all of which God already knows. God of mercy, you plant each of us like seeds in the same field, in the same soil, and together we are blessed by the sun, the wind, and the rain. Together we grow toward what you would have us be. When we deprive others of that same opportunity, forgive us. 
When we are tempted to uproot those we believe do not belong there with us, forgive us. When we label others and even ourselves as good or bad, forgive us. When we fail to admit that we ourselves are a mix of wheat and weeds, forgive us. When we are afraid to examine our own lives, our own hearts, for fear of what we might find, forgive us. Loving God, you know us inside and out, through and through. Search us out and lay your hands upon us. You know what we will say even before we speak. So help us, Lord, to reach out to the uprooted and rejected, the lonely and the outcast. Help us help each other to develop and grow the good in ourselves and others for the good of the whole world. Amen. Brothers and sisters, do not be afraid. For the Lord our God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God's hand shall lead us and hold us fast. So be reconciled with God and at peace with one another. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And thanks be to God. And now let us share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Um, so, at this time, I'd like to um, thank Kim for her continued work, and um, she has been working on knitting this shawl for Virginia Browning for a while, and now it's ready to be blessed. <laughs> a couple of no, a while, a couple of months. No, no, we get that. It's not as fast as it used to be. Hands get crampy. Um, but we like to offer a blessing on this, and so what I would like to do is um, lay it here, and you all may offer your hands out, reach out as in the form of a blessing, and let's bless this. Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of knitting and caring for others that you have put on Kim's heart. We pray that this shawl that she has worked on for months now for Virginia will be a blessing to her. That when she sees it, when she uses it, she will feel the love of this faith community wrapping her in warmth and happiness and goodwill. 
We pray all this in the power of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. So if you want to come over and after worship and just lay a little hand on it, that'd be lovely. Um, I invite you now, with all that you have heard and sung and said this day, to come forward with your gifts of generosity, your um, gifts and God's tithes. God, we give you thanks for our financial blessings, and we offer these our gifts and your tithes for you to bless and expand and send where they are needed so that your kingdom may come upon all the earth. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Our final hymn is number 384.
may the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest upon you and abide within you this day. And may you go forth from this time of worship, nourished in your spirit to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.